So this video is going to be a little bit different compared to all of my other videos, but this is something that I have been thinking about for a while and I just felt the need to let it out of my system. I mean, I guess you can say that the last part is true for all of my videos, you know, that's why they are out there and also out there. If you, if you know what I mean. Starting with a bad joke to deal with a potentially uncomfortable topic. Very on brand, Miro. Very on brand. I guess you can count on some things never changing on this channel. Isn't that comforting? What I wanted to talk about today is how to deal with your plants if you are low on energy. Heavy. I know. <sighs> There are various reasons why, you know, we go through these periods where we are low on energy and we just don't have enough to deal with our plants. But no matter what the reason is, I think if you are like me, you potentially may feel guilty about not rising to the task. But what I want to talk about today is how to go through this and just still convince yourself that you did a good job. My advice, number one, there is time. There is time. I don't know who needs to hear this. We probably all do, but there is time. There is time to water your plants and there is time to treat the pests on your plants. It is very likely that you did not water your plant yesterday and you do not have to do it today. If you didn't do it yesterday and the plant is fine, you don't have to do it today. You can do it tomorrow. Also, if you have pests on your plants and you just don't have energy to deal with them right now, it is very likely that those pests did not arrive today or yesterday. You probably had them for some time, several weeks, couple of months, who knows, when you noticed, and they're still gonna be there tomorrow. That doesn't sound like a very comforting thought, but it should be, so just take it. So before we just even start, I don't wanna hear anyone calling themselves lazy or just using any kind of unkind language towards oneself because of this, just, you know, accept that there is time you can deal with it at one point in the future. I just feel we needed to get through this first. My advice number two, and this is like an actual advice, I feel like, it is to be very selective. Very, very, very selective. You know, just start picking. Choose to deal with a small number of your plants today and stick to that number. Very important, stick to that number and return to the rest of them tomorrow. That's it. That's all you need to do. Very easy, I know. Now, I assume most of you watching have over 10 plants. I just feel that one does not subscribe to Basie plants if they have under 10 plants in their collection, and that's fine. We all have a lot of plants to water, but guess what? It does not have to be all done in one day. I know, it, it is a groundbreaking advice. Groundbreaking. That is why you subscribed. You better have. Do you need to water 100 plants today? Don't do it. Do 10 or do five. Also, I want to say pick a small number. If you have to water 100 plants and you just do not have energy to do that, pick 10. I would, I, I think 10 is a nice number. 10, 20, 20 is like also a lot. I tend to stick with sections, but we'll get into that later. Whatever is the number that you have picked, that is perfectly fine. And guess what? You have done something and you will have less to do tomorrow. Do you know how many times I chose to water 10 plants instead of 100? Many, many times. And did the rest of them die? Yes, some of them did, but that's, that's beside the point. They were most likely all on their way out. <laughs> it's not just because of that one watering. The reason I'm saying all of this is because I'm the kind of a person that is like, Rome could have been built in a day, and if I was there, I would have built it bigger and better. It's a very healthy way of thinking, right? So I tend to want to do everything all at once. And it's not such a great thing, I feel. I have been told, pointers have been given, advice and such has been <laughs> passed on. <laughs> not a great thing, not a great thing. There have been many moments where I would stay way past my bedtime. I'm not talking like midnight, I'm talking 4 a.m., 5 a.m. because I was cleaning 
and then you know it just goes into this whole thing where I start to suddenly you know it started with watering for example but then another task came up and I started to do that and before you know it it's 4 a.m. and I am moving the cabinets around. We have all seen it. I have made videos where cabinets were moved around. So, you know, it's a thing, not a great thing. And this is something that I have been working on for a long time. And it is something that I am still working on. And I have to put just a great deal of effort into not falling into the same pattern again because guess what it does not feel good yes i do achieve a lot but the next day i just don't feel better for doing all of that i actually feel quite bad for i feel tired if i start it with little energy if it's possible i go into the negatives and then for x period of days i cannot do much because I'm so exhausted. And then the guilt comes rolling in and it's just not a, it's a vicious circle. It's not a nice place to be. And I'm sure that some of you can also relate to this. And the way that I kind of learned how to deal with this is obviously I was talking to my friends and I was talking with my one friend in particular, Yelena, who also goes to therapy. And she just shared some advice with me that she learned some tactics, strategies to deal with, with stuff like this because she also had a similar thing going on. What I have started to do is I started to send my tasks, my list of tasks for that day to her so she can verify it and say if it's achievable in one day or if it's not because, you know, the reality goes through the window when I make my list of chores that I need to do and I just need an external person to verify is this doable or not. And she was that person for me. We don't do this right now, but how I deal with it now is I will purposely choose not to do everything. Do I know that I need to water all of these plants? Yeah, yeah, I know. I will choose not to because I know if I start to do that, I will fall in the same pattern. And before you know it, you know, it's gonna happen once and then it's gonna start happening again and again. And this isn't true only when it comes to watering, it also is true when it comes to repotting. And we all struggle with similar things or something else, but we all have these things, these moments. And there are many ways to deal with them, techniques, tools that we can acquire, stuff that we can learn, you know, all of it requires work unfortunately, but it does. And that is why I am very happy to thank to the sponsor of today's video, BetterHelp. BetterHelp is the world's largest therapy service and it is 100% online. With BetterHelp, you can tap into the network of over 30,000 licensed and experienced therapists who can help you with a wide range of issues. To get started, you just answer a few questions about your needs and preferences in therapy. Then you can talk with your therapist however you feel comfortable, whether it's via text, chat, phone, or video call. You can message your therapist at any time and you can schedule a live session with them whenever it is convenient for you. If your therapist isn't the right fit for you for any reason, you can switch to a new therapist with no additional charge. With BetterHelp, you get the same professionalism and quality that you expect from in-office therapy, but with a therapist who is more custom-picked for you, more flexible scheduling, and at a more affordable price. Get 10% off of your first month at betterhelp.com slash plants. That is betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash plants. And I have included the link in the description as well. And thank you once again, BetterHelp, for sponsoring this video. What I have learned over time in an attempt to deal with this issue is to kind of view my plant collection in sections. So I have my three grow tents and sometimes we view them as one and sometimes we view them separately. Usually we view them separately. Then I have the Millsbo, then I have the Rotstas. Sometimes I just refer to them as the cabinets. Sometimes we view them together if we feel very enthusiastic. Then we have the plants outside of the tents, which you can see, and then the wall is treated separately. So I have these sections and I will choose to deal with just one section. And I find that that really helps a lot. And I tell to myself, well, that's it. That's all I can do for today. And I also try to incorporate this even when I have like an abundance of energy. Okay, maybe I'll do two sections, but I will just try not to do all of them because again, there are also other things that can be done. So, you know, just, just be very selective. That is the point of this entire chapter. Okay. Tip number three, be a skipper. And it's not cardio. Don't worry. I also don't like cardio. Mm -mm. 
No. Do you need to mix in the fertilizer with your water, but you would rather drop face down on the floor than do that? Well, don't do it. I mean, also don't drop on the floor face down because, you know, we need the faces to stay perfect. Uh, I'm gonna reveal a secret for you. It's also gonna be groundbreaking, but take your plant to the tap. Kitchen, bathroom, outside, it doesn't matter. Don't do it if it's winter outside, but you know, you get the gist take it to the tap. I cannot tell you how many times I have done this. I've taken my plants to the tap, semi-hydro, you know, Leca, which is absolutely no-no, pawn, moss, plants in cocopeat and perlite, and it also doesn't matter what kind of a plant, orchid, hoya, aeroid, whatever. Take it to the tap. I mean, okay, don't do that with carnivorous plants, but that's also why we just don't grow carnivorous plants, because like, ugh, super needy, like, ugh. Do, do I care that I have a lot of calcium in my water? Yes, sometimes, but in this case, no. I think it is much more important that I did something. I water the plant, no matter how ever it is, whatever it is, then, you know, to not do it. And I know that a lot of the times I say on this channel that every time that I water my plants, I will use fertilizer. And guess what? It's a lie. It's a lie. I have a light to you. Listen, I try to do it. I'm not gonna tell you bad things. I'm not gonna, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you now. I'm telling you now. Don't, you don't have to do it every week. It's fine if you don't do it. But you know, when I'm giving you plant care advice, of course, I'm gonna try to give you the best possible care advice. And is that always the truth? No, it's not always the truth. I don't fertilize my plants every week. I try to, but sometimes it can be done. The external forces at play just don't allow it. And I remember my friend Yelena when she started to grow plants. Sometimes, you know, she just did not have time to add the fertilizer. And we were growing in semi hydro so you have to pH down the water, which, you know, I still do in pond. You have to pH down the water, add fertilizer, wait for a certain amount of time, you know, stir the solution, check the pH with the strips or with the meter. Maybe you need to adjust it. And that kind of takes time. She would call me and she would feel incredibly guilty about not doing it, not having energy. And she was like, are my plans going to die? I'm like, no, just skip it. Skip it. I've done it many times. And this repeated several times until at one time she pointed out to me or, you know, she made fun of me how I always give you this advice that you should fertilize your plants every time you water, if you're doing it in semi-hydro especially, like I'm not talking about regular organic potting mix, but inorganic, you know, every time you water, you fertilize. And she said, you, you really don't do it that much. I'm like, you know, I, I try to, I try to, but I don't do it all the time. And I have heard from some of my other friends, <laughs> Alex, that some of my aeroids are looking like they need fertilizer, yes. But guess what? But guess what? <laughs> My battery became empty. Why do I not see how much battery is left? I feel like before this happens, the screen should just flash at me, like do something. I'm looking at the screen, like I see it. Flash, do something, warnings. I can't remember where I was. You were supposed to guess something, so I hope you have guessed. That is the point. <laughs> all I'm saying, if you follow my advice to fertilize all the time, that's great for you. If you can stick to that, that's great for you. My friend Yelena had amazing results when she followed my advice. She had much, much more success growing plants. They grew faster than mine because I wasn't following my advice. Why would I? I'd give it to you. Does that mean I will follow it? I shan't. Advice number five, limit yourself. Limit yourself, okay? In the box. We are in the box. Don't think outside of the box. Set a time. Maybe it is five minutes. Maybe it is 10 minutes. Five minutes is kind of little to do anything with plants, but maybe, you know, 30 minutes, that's a good amount of time. Or you can set aside an hour and don't go over that. Set a timer. Siri is kind of rude. Did, did you notice that whenever, every time you say, hey Siri, she's like, hmm. I don't know if you have an iPhone, but like in the past, she would be more polite and she would like talk to you. And now it's like attitude. Let's, let's try her. Hey Siri. Stick that in a place. Set a timer for yourself. And when the timer rings or runs out or whatever it is that the timers do, you're done. I would strongly urge you to also include the cleanup. If you water like me, you're gonna water potentially the walls, potentially the floor, potentially yourself. Just make sure that you include the cleanup time. You know, this is kind of like being selective and realistic with what you can do. If you have one hour, maybe repot for 45 minutes because cleanup takes a lot of time. Also, just like with being selective, I think this is something that needs to be done repeatedly in the long run because 
you know, if I don't set a timer for myself, I will very frequently go over time and then I will feel bad for not doing something else. For example, I will want to do plant chores, record a video, and then after that I'm like, okay, we just need to start editing. And then I don't. I just get lost in the task, not because I love it, but because I just get this urge that I really need to do all of this. And I go way, way, way over time. And before you know it, it's the end of the day. I'm exhausted and I haven't done what I wanted to do. It's kind of like they go hand in hand, being selective and setting the timer and just do that repeatedly. And, you know, it may take a long time, but we'll, we'll get the hang of it or the knack for it. What's the expression? The next thing is not uh, an advice per se, but a, something that I think needs to be said. And that's, you don't need to love your plants all the time. Oh, are you, did you just like the video right now? Don't. I feel that we all go through the periods where it's like, I do not want to have all of these plants. This is insane. This is way too much. I'm sure that you have felt like this. Maybe you feel like this now. Maybe you will feel like this in the future. I have felt like this in the past and I will feel like this in the future 100%. For whatever reason, we can get frustrated with our plants. Maybe something isn't growing well. Maybe you have a pest infestation and it's just too much work. Anything external, maybe you're dealing with some other thing. All of this starts to feel like too much. And all I want you to know is that this will pass. Sometimes, you know, th these periods will last for a couple of days, sometimes for a week, sometimes for a couple of months even. Big one happened, I think, for me in 2020, for, where for several months I felt like this. And every time I come out of this state, I feel good that I do have plants and I did not decide to give up on all of them. And I think the reason for this is because we all like plants, right? Even my sister who has like one lucky bamboo, it's not a bamboo, it's a dracaena on her desk. Okay, she has my pachira too, but beside the point, she also likes plants, right? And what I find to be helpful is to maybe feel like this, remind yourself why is it that you grow plants? For me, I grow plants to feel better. There is like this unexplicable feeling to it that sometimes, you know, makes me cry when I see one of the Hoyas bloom for the first time, but you know, things like that. Or maybe for you, it's a new leaf if you love to grow aeroid. Can't relate, love them, but can't relate with the new leaf stuff, but I can relate with the first bloom stuff. And the truth is I met very few people who didn't like plants, but like really, really did not like, could not stand to have a single plant in their home. And honestly, if you're like that, first of all, what are you doing on this channel? Second of all, I don't think you're okay. But anyways, I just feel that we all like them. Some people will have one plant. Some of us will have hundreds. Hello, it's me. I just genuinely believe that this is something that is naturally part of all of us. I, again, don't know many people that would prefer to walk the concrete street with nothing on it but, you know, buildings versus walking near a park or walking through a street that has like a bunch of trees in it, right? Again, if you love the concrete, re-examine stuff, like re-examine. I mean, I also lived with people who said they would not allow us to have any plants while we lived together and then, you know, several months of actually several years fast forward and they cry when their one of their monstera dies. Yes, Dana, I am talking about you. Hello. <laughs> am I reminding you of the traumatic event? My friend, she had this huge monstera that I gave her. It wasn't so huge when I gave, gave it to her, but she grew to this beautiful, huge monstera and we kind of tried to propagate it and it did not work well. Parts of the plant survived and she is get, growing it big again, but it's a rough period. I don't know. I'm not sure. Maybe this is advice. I feel it's useful, so we're gonna leave it in. The big one, the big one, the big one. Something I'm doing right now. Get ahead of the moment. I know for a fact that I will 100% deal again with the low energy moment, right? Normal. It's coming. Every year there are several of them. That's fine. I think now the best way to get ahead of it for me, maybe you have something else, but I'm gonna kind of go through several things here. But I think for me, one of the best ways is to grow in self-watering pots. Do we have an example? Does anyone want to volunteer? 
Example number one, they did not volunteer, my Hoedenisi Frida. I buy these self-watering pots. They're kind of inexpensive. They're made by Centino and this is not sponsored by them, but I grow in these and I have found them to be very useful. We let the reservoir dry out. So, you know, we're gonna fill those. I watered this plant for the last time, I think two and a half weeks ago. It is just so much easier to deal with your plants when you just, you know, you don't have to water them every week. I know that that can be relaxing. And there are times when I felt like, you know, having to do something with plants every day is relaxing. And trust me, even if you put your plants in self-watering pots, there will be stuff to do, right? There are always stuff to do around our plants. For me, I just feel very useful to have as many of my plants in self-watering pots because Maybe this week I only have time for the rotsters. Maybe the next week I can do the tent or in a couple of days, you know, I don't have to do everything in one day and there is no pressure to do so because they're fine. They're not only surviving, they're thriving because they have the magical thing called the water reservoir. And I really recommend this. And this isn't something that I have been doing and you know, it's very expensive to do, but I have kind of decided this year to slow down with my plant collecting and buying new Hoyas because I'm just like, okay, every time we buy a plant we need to buy a self-watering pot and that's that in the future i would just like you know every time i buy 10 hoyas i also buy 10 self-watering pots and i know that, that is gonna be okay because then it's not such a pressure compared to buying 10 hoyas and have no plan you know no self-watering pots i mean 10 hoyas is not a lot but you know you do one order you do two orders and before you know it you have 30, 40 new plants and they need to be watered every couple of days because it is summer and it's 40 degrees. Or maybe you have high humidity and you have to turn on dehumidifier. Or maybe it's, again, hot, you have to turn on the air conditioning and they dry out every other day. For me, summers are very intense. But I think this summer it's going to be fine because, again, so many of them are in self-watering pots and it's going to be so much easier. Last year and the year before that, there were couple of months where you know every other day I had to water and it was I just didn't even know where I was it was insane so number one get yourself self-watering pots they're great they work for Hoyas for aeroids sub tip number two reconsider hanging your Hoyas I have a lot of hanging Hoyas uh, well not a lot anymore I actually reconsidered quite a lot of them and I feel good because of it I do still have the wall in the future I will also try to hack away to have the wall self-watering, maybe something similar to what Summer Rain Oaks did, though more DIY, because it would just be much easier for me. And there are self-watering pods that you can hang, but not very easy to find around here. Also, I feel, and I feel this is true for everyone, hanging plants, while they look beautiful, get neglected the most. At least here, Sorry, if I'm gonna put something to be a hanging plant, maybe this can be sub tip of a sub tip. Choose something that can take that, that can take that level of neglect. Sub tip number three, consider cabinets, consider grow tents. Cabinets, if you cannot stand not to see your plants, but also be wary that they're not so big and not so many plants can fit, but grow tents if you don't mind having a big black box in your room and if you don't miss your plants. I get comments quite frequently where people wonder how I don't miss them. I have so many out of the tents, right? And I just don't need to see them every day. And it's also easy to unzip the tent and just look in. And I just don't feel that. I'm always surprised when I open the tent and I see how they're thriving. So that's enough for me. It's gonna be so much easier for so many reasons to take care of them in the tents or in the cabinets. It's gonna be easier to treat for pests. It's gonna be easier to water if you spill. No one cares if you spill in the grow tent. And it's gonna help you with the humidity so you won't have to water as frequently. So just something to consider. Also a sub tip number four-ish, can count. Reevaluate your collection. And this is something that I have been doing. I have been considering what plants I want to continue to grow and what plants I don't. And I feel at one point in the plant community it has kind of become a competition how many plants you will have. Is it going to be 600, 700, 800? Who can do more, right? And I just think we all have different thresholds and 
If your threshold is 200, that does not make you a worse grower than someone who can do 600. You know, you feel start to feel bad. They don't look good. Maybe because your threshold is 100 and that's fine. Do that, right? There's just reconsider a collection, you know, reconsider it. I'm doing it all the time. I get Hoyas all the time, but I'm also like thinking which of these could go. Introduce your plants to your friends or just ask your friends for help, right? As you know, a couple of months ago, I had this vertigo issue and it wasn't nice. And I was out of commission for over a week, I think two weeks really. And the reason for that is because I just really did not let myself recover properly. Had it not been for my friends who came over to help me, I think there was one very fun photo from that event, <laughs> I don't know how I would have done it. And I, you know, I'm someone that doesn't really ask for help, but I am glad that I allowed them to come. Maybe you're not going to ask for help, but you know, if you have great friends, they're going to offer it and just allow it. Be receptive, accept the help. A lot of the times people who don't have so many plants do enjoy from time to time, I think. I don't know if my friends enjoyed that, but I think they did. They enjoy, you know, being around plants and repotting or watering or something like that. Don't do it every week, obviously, but you know, once every three, four months, you can do it. You can also bond over that. You can drink coffee, eat food while repotting, gossip, watch TV shows while repotting. That's a great activity. Catch up. So ask your friends to come over. Tip number eight, get away from your plants. Remove yourself from that situation. Um, I find that this is where grow tents really help me as well to kind of remove myself from the plants. Maybe there is like some separation, right? But also sometimes what helps is if you have an overwhelming amount of chores and you don't have so much energy, just get away from the plants, go for a walk. This is true for me. Maybe it's not true for you, but I find when I remove myself from a situation, it really helps me to think. So I go for a walk, and I actually get to prioritize what needs to be done first, what is absolutely necessary, or sometimes I will go for a walk and I'm like, actually none of that is necessary to do today and I'm low energy, so I don't do it. And that's fine, great conclusion, amazing. But when you stay near your plants, you start to see more and more things and it's really easy to start to spiral, especially if you're excellent at spiraling. Amazing skill, amazing. <clears throat> Not something that should be proud of, Miro. Not something you should be proud of. Don't get attached. I sometimes get attached to my plants. A lot of the times I get attached to my plants, but try not to. Or if you have attached and something happens, try to be kind to yourself. Maybe this isn't, again, specifically a tip, you know, how to deal with your plants when you're low energy, but the inevitable will happen. You will have low energy, life will happen, whatever. And if you have attached to your plant, it's gonna be much more difficult to get over that. You're gonna start to feel very, very bad about it. Maybe it's a plant from someone who is very dear to you and maybe they're not around anymore. Maybe it's a plant you have inherited and it just didn't do well. I just need you to separate yourself here from the plant because we assign meaning to things. But that plant is somewhat replaceable. And this is kind of difficult to talk about because I know that a lot of people are attached to their plants. They have a special meaning for them. Oh, this battery is also empty. My battery ran out of again because I'm just talking way too much. So time to wrap it up, Miro. That is a sign. What I wanted to say here is I just feel that the person who gave you the plant that has a lot of value to you, that is of the highest significance, maybe in your plant collection, would 100% not want you to feel bad about it. If something goes wrong with the plant, they don't want you to cry about it. They don't want you to be depressed about it. They don't want you to use unkind words, for example, towards yourself because of something like that. So try to keep that in mind. I feel that is more of a tip. All right, I think that is the end of the video. We have talked for over two hours. By we, I just think, you know, me. My, my plants want to get out. The, you know that the part where I said, get away from your plants. If my plants could walk, they would run now. They would just be out of the room. I hope that this video was helpful for you. I would really like to see what is something that you do when you, you know, when you're dealing with low energy, but there are plant chores to do. So let me know down in the comments below what that is. 
Maybe it's something that I didn't mention. Maybe it is something that is, you know, new to me or something that will help someone else reading the comments. So make sure to leave that comment below. Also, if you're not subscribed to the channel, consider to do so right there. Still don't know the sites. Mirror image is very complicated. And, you know, I truly appreciate all of you that do subscribe. So thank you so much. Let's just try to make you uncomfortable with compliments. Does, do compliments make you uncomfortable? Is it only just me? That is that. I hope that you're having a wonderful week and I will see you very soon in the next video. So until then, goodbye. I would like to take some time to thank my patrons. A massive shout out to my $5 patrons. My three anonymous patrons, Alex von Siebenthal, Anne Margaret Moen, Angela Bernard, Angela Parrish, and C. Ashley Hoyas, Becky Higgins, Beth Gibson, Betsy, Catherine Molling, Danub Daniels, Daria Kaminska, Diane Sikorsky, Farah, Gina Guy, Go Green Tropical, Heather Uppenkamp, Hoji Scott, Houseplant Heather Hoya, Heather Yana Griffin, Jessica Chio, Kara, Casey Gross, Kelly Cool, Kelso, Kristen Sherwood, Leplan De Steph, Mandy Milliken, Marcel Har, Mars B, Martina, Leaf for Day, Marty Miller, Mary Rose, Melissa Walker, Michael Curley, Nicole Ferranti, Mirka Grun Roos, Moa Edmund, Naili Yank, Neha Basu, Nicole Moreau, Nicole and Caleb of Schleep Tropical, Sneeta Macy, PJ, Plan Druid, Rachel Peterson, Robin L. Jennings, Sherry Kumar, Stephanie H2O, Sybil Williams, Tanya, Tessa Martins, The Swedish Hoya Dude, Tia B, TJWO, Wendy, Wendy Foreman, Wendy Rossman, Youth of the Wallamuth, Zordorama, and Zlokobni Pony. Also, a big thank you to my $3 patrons. Angelina Farnan, Anna K, Brenda Little, Brana Phillips, Kilone, Christina Greengrass, Claudia L, Fluffy Blue Sheep, Jerry's Garden, Lisa Helling, Morgan Kennedy, Nella, Nerdy Kathy, Plan Druid, Plantelania, Ringlob, and Tang Watana Cool. And a thank you to my $1 patrons, Kari Constance, Amelia Bronson, Jacinta, Jolly Sullivan, Kayla Vavra, Lauren M, Lori Ann Subramaniam, Luzman Fernandez, Neely Spicer, and Olivia Chinmuller. Thank you all so much for incredible support. I hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope you're having a wonderful week with your plants, and I will see you soon in the next video.